tonight I'm going to change the solenoid on this sprinkler control valve which is part of my reverse osmosis system. Yep, this is an aquarium related video. I know you guys, I feel bad, you never get any aquarium videos. So anyway, let me explain what's going on here. So cold water in, I have a on off sprinkler valve that is hooked up to an aftermarket power supply for this Aquatech booster pump from Bulk Reef Supply and a pressure sensing switch. So what this does is it stops the booster pump from hunting. And um, if you don't do this, it will continue to seep water out your membrane. It doesn't need to do that. It's gonna seep water when you're producing water. So when the water pressure is high, it cuts off the power to the pump and it cuts off the water supply so that the city water pressure at 30 PSI doesn't continue to bleed water out of your RO system. That was my experience in the past. So when I went to set this back up, the first thing I found was that my power supply was dead. And the power supply was stupid expensive, so I just bought this wall wart transformer with a short protect built in and a little green light to let me know it's running. 15 bucks, 20 bucks Amazon, I don't know. I don't remember, I don't care. It's a lot cheaper than whatever the official power supply would have been, and that was an ugly brick that there was never a good place for. This will eventually move on to something on the wall. But then I found my solenoid was dead, so about hmm, two months ago I replaced the solenoid. And I thought about doing a video on it, but quite frankly, it was a long and irritating and frustrating project. Um, it transitions to polyethylene tubing that I wish I had never, ever, ever installed in this house because I cannot get to it to change it, and it's already leaked once where I could get to it. I wish that I had installed 3 8 PEX, which is a heck of a lot harder and more durable, but the fittings are rarer than winning lottery tickets. And seriously, 3 8, 3 8 PEX is just fine, but it is a absolute nightmare to get the fittings for it. So anyway, none of that has anything to do with today's problem. I noticed some seepage the other day, and I was like, what the hell? I thought maybe it was fitting up there. And um, when I installed the sink, that's another video you guys haven't seen yet because it's still in production. I gotta get around to editing it. Anyway, I noticed that there was this drip, and it was coming from the stupid solenoid. So it's leaking out of here, running down on my wiring and dripping at about the rate of four gallons a day. And, and quite frankly, that's irritating. So first things first, we want to shut off the, the power. Second, we want to shut off the water supply because you always want a water cut off. And then third, we want to cut off the production water, which right now this only serves my ice maker. But there's another line up here that goes all the way to the aquarium for makeup water. Yeah, that's right, kitty. My cat Fluffy just walked in. Let's see if he's stupid enough to jump on the stuff that I just painted. I love that cat. He's the sweetest cat that I've ever owned, but he's not a very smart cat sometimes. So anyway, all you need to do is undo these little things and just pry them open. It's AC current, so it is not, it doesn't matter which way you connect them, it's going to work. Because AC goes two steps forward and two steps back. Sort of like the hokey pokey. You want to be careful, because you don't want to ruin your power supply wires. But then beyond that, the rest of this doesn't matter, and this probably will get messy. Yep, there we go. So, how that could leak through the thing is beyond me, but it's an $8 part at Home Depot with a five-year warranty, which means it's going back. Because, well, that's irritating. Yeah, it doesn't need that. Doesn't need that. 
should have just bought the whole damn valve and been done with it. But, you know, I thought, why replace the valve and go through all the pain in the ass that's involved with that if you can just replace the stupid solenoid? Mm -hmm. I'm just checking to see if there's supposed to be a, something in there. There's not. So this screws into a little fitting. And I just want to make sure it's on there nice and tight. And I promise if it leaks again, it's getting replaced. So the, the ceiling fitting is up here. It's this gray ring. And it's a hard seal, so I don't think it is bad either. There we go. Wasn't that looking easy. Now, this comes pretty somewhat stripped, and that's not how you actually want to use it. So let me get a pair of clippers. And like the last time I tried to find these, I know where they are today. So you want to cut these off. And you'll want a pair of pliers and you'll want some little three, three third leg splices. I don't know what they're called. I don't really care either. I just know there's places. And you want to feed this through here. If you're blind like me, you need to wear your reading glasses. But I think I can get through this without my reading glasses. And then you want to just stick one in here. And remember, it doesn't matter which one because this is DC. Or no, I'm sorry, this is AC. But it does matter which side. One side is capped and one side isn't. So you just want to get that in there. And then you want to hold both wires in your hand at the same time you hold the connector and then you want to grab it here don't push yet make sure it's seated then push and what that's going to do is that little metal piece in there is going to cut through the wire and electrically bond it with the other one it's really a very simple process Sometimes it helps to pry this open a little bit to give it the clearance to get in here. And if you have enough sense to think through this before you insert the first wire, you can turn this where it's easier to do. Which is probably the other way that I had it. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is you get this on here. So now I powered it on and I don't want to see any water coming out of this. Alright. And now I'm going to cause a bleed because I want to see the pump run. Man, if I have a second leak. So that caused, I, I just turned on the DI&I side of it, which isn't really connected to anything, and that causes the pump to run. Turned it off, it stopped. So that problem is solved. Um, at this point, I've got to give it some time to dry out and make sure that there's nothing else going on. I'm going to dump this water out and leave the bucket under here to catch anything that drips. and. I'm going to say a cuss word or two that I hope it doesn't leak again because I'm over the leaks. If it keeps leaking, it may find itself outside.
Thanks, guys.